Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, this is the fifth video of underwriting chapter and in this video, we are going to solve this simple problem which is based upon firm underwriting. But this problem is slightly different than the previous firm underwriting problem which we solved in the previous video of this chapter. Now, to see that difference in everything, let's just go through the question first. Here they have said Rafco Limited has an authorized capital of 5 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. You see the sentence here they have given us authorized capital. This authorized capital is of no use to us. It is of no use to us. So always, always ignore the authorized capital. Okay, that's it. Just ignore it and just go forward. The company issued one lakh number of shares at a premium of rupees five each. So here they have given us the issued shares. Okay, one lakh shares were issued by this company at a premium of rupees five each. See, they have given us the premium, the value of the share. See now. In this problem, we are just calculating the net liability and the total liability. So here we are not concerned about the premium. Why? Because here we are not calculating the underwriter's commission. So just ignore the premium of rupees 5 each. Okay, just ignore it. We are only concerned about the number of shares, not the value of shares. We are only concerned about the number of shares, how much shares were issued, how much shares were received, like that. Okay, fine. Just ignore the premium. The whole of the issue was underwritten as follows. Then they have given us the shares underwritten by each of the underwriters. P 60,000, Q 30,000 and R 10,000. These are the shares underwritten by each of these underwriters. There are three underwriters, right? P, Q, R. Simple. This is the agreement between the Rafco Limited and the underwriters. Then this problem is based upon firm underwriting. So they have given us the firm underwriting application. That is 10,000, 4,000 and 2,000. P said to the Rafco Limited that Rafco Limited, I am very much interested in your company. I want to purchase the shares of your company for myself. How much shares? 10,000 shares. So P purchased how much? 10,000 shares, right? This is what is meant by firm underwriting that underwriters give definite commitment to the company that they are going to purchase the shares of the company irrespective of public subscription. Okay, that is what is meant by firm underwriting. So all of them said they are interested in the company and they want to purchase the shares for themselves. That's it. Okay, simple. The simple meaning of firm underwriting. Then they have said the company received subscription for 90,000 shares, including firm underwriting. So 90,000 shares applications were received out of which following were the marked applications. So they have given us the marked applications of each of the underwriters. But you see this excluding firm underwriting. So here it is excluding firm underwriting in the previous problem in the previous firm underwriting problem which we solved in the fourth video there it was including firm underwriting and we had to split it but here it is excluding firm underwriting so these are just the actual marked applications okay simple right 32,000 20,000 and 8,000 and then they have said calculate the liability of underwriters by giving by giving the benefit of firm underwriting to all the underwriters in the previous video the benefit of firm underwriting was given but to each of the underwriters and we treated there as marked application because the benefit was given to each underwriters. Okay, stress is on this. Okay, each and given. But here you can see the benefit is given, but not to each, but to all the underwriters. Okay, if it is given to all the underwriters, then you have to treat it as unmarked application. See, benefit is not given to each underwriter, not given to each underwriter and given to all underwriter is the same meaning, right? Not given to each underwriter and given to all the underwriter. The meaning is same, this and this, all right? So you have to treat it here as unmarked application, okay? So let's just analyze this question very fast. Now let's analyze this question very fast. See, at first what happened, at first this company issued one lakh number of shares to the public. Yes, one lakh number of shares were issued. And then this whole issue was underwritten by these three underwriters, P, Q, R, 60,000, 30,000, 10,000. So 60, 30, 10, simple. And then what happened? And then firm underwriting happened. See, firm underwriting of P, 10,000, firm underwriting of Q, 4,000, firm underwriting of R, 2,000, simple. 10,000, 4,000, 2,000, simple. Okay. And then what happened? And then the company received applications for 90,000 shares. Yes, the applications were received 90,000, including firm underwriting. They have said including firm underwriting in the total applications received, the firm underwriting applications are also included. Okay. Keep that in mind. And then 
and then they have said marked application excluding from underwriting. So the marked applications are given in the question, but they are excluding from underwriting. That means here the firm applications are not included. These are only actual marked applications. So 32,000, 20,000, 8,000 are actual marked applications because they are excluding firm underwriting. Simple. Then you have to calculate the unmarked applications. See, I have calculated there 14,000. See. To calculate unmarked applications, what you have to do here, here in the total application, there is marked applications, firm underwriting applications, as well as unmarked applications. So to calculate the unmarked applications, you have to subtract the marked applications and then you have to subtract the firm underwriting applications. Then only you will get the unmarked applications. Okay, so 90,000 is the total applications received minus all marked application 32,000 minus 20,000. 20,000 then minus 8,000 yeah all the mark applications you get 30,000 then you have to subtract the firm on writing yes 10,000 plus 4,000 plus 2,000 see 14,000 then plus 2,000 is 16,000 so in total the firm on writing applications are 16,000 so I will subtract them in together see 16,000 then you will get 14,000 see 14,000 is the is the unmarked application simple I subtracted the marked applications and then the firm underwriting because here in the total application there is marked applications, firm underwriting applications as well as unmarked applications. So you have to subtract marked and firm underwriting to get unmarked applications. Simple. And then in the question it is said calculate the liability of underwriters by giving the benefit of firm underwriting to all the underwriters. So here they have said give the benefit to all the underwriters. How do we give the benefit to all the underwriters? We give that by treating them as unmarked application right in unmarked application what we do we divide them in gross liability ratio so we have to do that okay so here the benefit is given to all the underwriters okay so we'll see that while solving now let's solve this problem first you need to prepare this table for the calculation of underwriters liability and the format is very simple see particulars column and the underwriters column here there are three underwriters pqr so three columns of the underwriters pqr simple then first you need to take the gross liability that is how much shares were underwritten by each of the underwriters see here the shares underwritten by p were 60,000 and by q were 30,000 and by r were 10,000 so take that okay 60,000 30,000 and 10,000 and then you have to find out the ratio of these three figures, right? 60,000, 30,000 and 10,000. You know, right? How to find out the ratio? Cancel out all the zeros and do that. So I get 6 is to 3 is to 1. Simple. Okay. And then you need to subtract the marked applications. See, in the question, they have given us the marked applications. See, 32,000, 20,000 and 8,000. Yeah, they have given us the marked applications, but they have said they are excluding firm underwriting so that means you just have to take them directly okay you don't have to do anything because they are excluding firm underwriting they are only actual marked applications right so take them directly 32,000 20,000 and 8,000 so subtract them okay so 60,000 minus 32,000 that is equal to 28,000 simple so 60 minus 32 it is 28,000 and then 30 minus 20 10,000 and then 10,000 minus 8,000 that is 2,000 simple and then what you need to do and then you need to find out the unmarked applications. See, unmarked applications were not given in the question. You have to find out the unmarked applications and I have shown you how to do that in the analysis of this video, right? So I have got 14,000 as unmarked applications. So we have to distribute the unmarked applications always in the gross liability ratio, right? 6 is to 3 is to 1. So how much are the unmarked applications? 14,000. So distribute them. 14,000 into 6 divided by 10 that is equal to 8400 yeah 8400 see 8400 and then 14000 into 3 divided by 10 that is 4200 simple and then of c 14000 into 1 divided by 10 that is equal to 1400 yeah 1400 so take that and subtract them from the balance yeah so 28,000 minus 8,400 that is equal to 19,600 19,600 right and then here 10,000 minus 4,200 so 10,000 minus 4,200 you get 5,800 simple 10,000 minus 4,200 you get 5,800 and then 2,000 minus 1,400 see how much 2,000 minus 1400 you get 600 simple you subtracted the unmarked applications 
simple you got the balance and then the firm underwriting see they have said benefit is given to all the underwriter the benefit is given to all the underwriter that means benefit is not given to each underwriter it is given to all it is not given to each it is given to all so whenever they say like this you have to treat the firm underwriting as unmarked applications now how did you treat those unmarked applications you divided them you distributed them in the gross liability ratio so the same thing you have to do in case of firm underwriting if they say like this the benefit is not given to each underwriter or the benefit is the benefit is given to all the underwriters if it says like that then you have to distribute it in the gross liability ratio okay how much is firm underwriting see the firm underwriting is 10000 4000 and 2000 first you have to add them together okay so it is 10000 plus 4000 plus 2000 that is 16000 right in total it is 16000 so first you have to do the total and then you have to divide them among the underwriters see it is how much it is uh, 16000 so 16000 into into 6 divided by 10 that is equal to 9600 and then here let's do that 16000 into 3 divided by 10 you get 4800 4800 and then and then you see and then 16000 16000 into 1 divided by 10 that is 1600 yeah 1600 so simple all right then subtract them so 19600 minus 9600 you get 10000 and then 5800 minus 4800 you get 1000 and then 600 minus 1600 see here now there is surplus see 600 minus 1600 that is 1000 but it is in minus you see this it is in minus that means he has brought more shares than what he is supposed to so whenever there is surplus i told you right whenever there is surplus always distribute the surplus to the other other underwriters okay so let's do that so we got here 10,000, 1,000 and here minus 1,000 surplus. So to remove this surplus, to remove this minus, we have to do plus. Okay, we have to add. So 1,000 plus, so it will become nil. Okay, and then we have to distribute this among the other underwriters. See, we will do that. See here, we will do that in the ratio of 6 is to 3. See now, this uh, underwriter, this underwriter, who is this? R. This R is gone now, so the remaining is 6 is to 3. So in that ratio, we will distribute it. Okay, so let's see. 1,000 1000 into 6 divided by 9 because 6 plus 3 is 9 so 9 we got 666.66 so let's round off and 667 okay we rounded it off and then here let's see 3 divided by 3 divided by 9 into into how much 1000 right so we get 333.33 three, three, three three three. so we will round that off also so we will get 333 three, three. okay simple and then you need to subtract that 10,000 minus minus 667 you will get the net liability after subtracting the surplus and everything we did everything right marked applications unmarked applications and firm underwriting and then surplus we got the net liability as 9,333 simple and then we also need to subtract this 1,000 minus 333 we get 667 as the net liability so we got the net liability and then at last what you need to do and then at last you need to add the firm underwriting because these guys these underwriters has to pay for the firm underwriting right those firm applications so you have to add them okay so 10,000 plus 9,333 is equal to 19,333 and then 4,000 plus 667 is equal to 4,667 and then here his liability became nil right but now he has to pay for these firm applications so you have to add that and his liability is also becoming 2,000 shares okay so the total liability is 19,333 and 4,667 and 2,000 okay so you got it right it's very simple here just the different thing is that here we treated the firm underwriting as unmarked applications because the benefit was given to all the underwriters right that is what was different over here okay it's very simple in the previous video we saw the firm underwriting were treated as marked applications but here they were treated as unmarked applications we distributed them in the gross liability ratio that's it okay and at last you have to add the firm underwriting okay in both the methods you have to add the firm underwriting simple all right 